All right, welcome back in. If you've noticed, there's been no cracks tonight. That's because we are drinking some beautiful sours from uh, Revelry Brewing that only come in bottles, so it's kind of hard to get that. I tried it once, and it didn't doesn't work that great. Plus, you don't drink it out of the bottle. I might sit here and pour it into a glass on yeah. here. We got some throwbacks, some Ramblin' Rubus. Mm, can't get that anymore. That stuff's that so anymore. nice, you can't drink it out the bottle? The, the boys all have... <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't. You got to let it breathe. <clears throat> oh, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about anything. It's all nice about mouthfeels and it's, it smells of leather bound books and <laughs> aromatics, rich mahogany. <laughs> so no cracks tonight. Sorry about that one. Um, but Maybe a little later. We'll see. Yeah, we might have to switch it up. It's only so many bottles you can go through, but definitely go check out the hold for sure. That's Revelry's new sour facility. <laughs> Facility. Yep. Uh, Just it's awesome. If you're in Charleston. It's right across the street from their uh I guess mainstay brewery, right, and the uh, rooftop. And then next week they're they're doing a little collaboration party on Wednesday, uh, the September twenty sixth. If you're local to Charleston, Mex One and, and the Hold is doing a collaboration. Amigose. No, so I like that. So it sounds like Amigos, but it's a Gose, mm-hmm. which is a sour beer. If you're not familiar, into that, yeah. So that'll be a lot of fun. It was supposed to happen last week. Hurricane Flo really, yeah, kicked it out of there. Excuse me, Flo. <laughs> <laughs> me. All right. Well, we're going to get in here, like we said, talk a little bit Steelers. Mostly James Conner going to throw a little Juju Smith-Schuster in there at the end of that. Um, but before we get rolling, I wanted to say anybody who's listening on the podcast who maybe doesn't already subscribe to us on YouTube, we're like 20 people away from 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if anybody listening hasn't already subscribed on YouTube, it would be awesome if you guys could go over there just take a second and hit that subscribe button. Even if you don't use it, it's still, we break up videos and you'll get notifications when we post stuff. And we go so, live. We've been going yeah. live on Sunday. Good the, call, Jay Wayne. The first week we went live uh, to answer sit start questions and we made that exclusive to our Patreon members only. But then last week we went ahead and hit the little public button on that. So anybody that was subscribed to our YouTube page got a notification. The FF Dynasty boys are going live to answer your sit start questions. We made sure to answer all of our Patreon questions first in depth, and then we got into that YouTube chat and answered a bunch of people's right. st- sit start questions. So be on the lookout for that. We, we're trying to get in there about eleven forty-five Sunday morning a.m. for your pleasure. All right, enough with all that jibber jabber. Let's get to some fun jibber jabber. <laughs> James, James Connor. Connor is going to be our subject today, Mister um, James Connor. Yeah, you. Well, I can't call anybody Mister with that haircut. Oh. Why is it still there? You must have lost a bet. Maybe it's a prank. Maybe it's, it's for a real, bet. for real. It's not for real, for real. I How mean, do you know? It's two us. weeks in a row, yeah. and, and he's he, not a rookie. I mean, he's hanging on. That's what I'm saying. It's two weeks in a row, and I mean, he's well, not. Well, maybe now he's superstitious, and he's like, hey, I'm doing work, so I got to leave it. Uh, maybe it's some stuff we don't know about. Hmm. He must have lost some sort of bet. <laughs> there's, sure. I can't believe there's not any news out on it. He lost a bet. Well, Had to have. Haircut or not. So James Conner right now was fantastic week one week two not as great on the ground but they were down 21 points early um failed to short of a comeback uh losing to the chiefs at home 42 37 only had eight carries for 17 yards but did get you a touchdown uh in in that effort not a whole lot of rushing to be spoke of obviously when you're down like that early that game plan kind of goes out the window a little bit sure he did end up with five catches and 48 yards and then you put in the rushing touchdown there it's Fine day for James Conner once again. Um, so if you're a Le'Veon Bell owner who has James Conner, that was great for you again. If you're not and you own Le'Veon Bell, which is really kind of the question that I'm striving at here is, do you sell James Conner right now? How could you? Well, uh, there's a two-part question. I How think. could you? If, if, if you have Le'Veon Bell... The, and you have James Conner together. If you got the pair, then obviously James Conner's done a nice job. Like he nineteen on a, in a bad game script, still got nineteen points last week, nineteen and a half. He's got the fourth most awesome touchdown run and, too. And, he was and, stuffed and spun out of that thing and dove and made a miraculous play. And we're talking dynasty here, right? Just to clarify, we were no, normally talking dynasty, but we're in season, so sometimes you can get caught up whether it's redraft or dynasty. Gotcha, gotcha. So dynasty. So you know, fourth most running back points in PPR right now. Um, for James Conner, if you have the pair, 
I don't see how you can sell James Conner. Yeah, if you usually have to pair, you'll you'll if, bet on the on the flop. Right, right, exactly. You want to see the flop. <laughs> so you, if you got them both here, you know, got to take the Oldham if, if you got them both, when Le'Veon Bell comes back, you're not going to lose anything. Obviously, when Le'Veon Bell comes back, you'll lose a huge sell high window for James Conner. But the bet is when you, you see you the flop, pre and post flop. The, the, right. Well, the the bet here uh, would be just... the the and the and the question that's going to end up coming out of this is what happens next year because sure. obviously for dynasty you know it's this year plus next year and more if you know Le'Veon bell comes back this year and he stays healthy then james connor's gonna be on your bench right. Le'Veon bell comes back this year and he gets hurt james connor comes right back into your lineup right so the, i would but say if, that but let me finish then the other one is <laughs> Le'Veon bell is not a stealer next year and then james connor then, then maybe then you have if two you have, starting running then backs. you have two starting running backs exactly exactly oh so God. There's your there's your play, and there's then obviously scenario. the the other scenario is. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you have the pair, James Conner's doing exactly what you want him to do. Right. So you're probably not selling. No, him. that wasn't the question that I ended up asking. Corey okay. never asks answers the question. Well, I wanted to set it up. I said I'll just the say other it part of the question set it up is forever. If never you don't it. have James Conner, or if you don't have Le'Veon Bell and you have James Conner, do you sell him right now? If you well, have, if you have the pair, if you have Le'Veon Bell, <laughs> clearly he's doing what you need him to do, and you're just gonna. I'm gonna ride. This is that why you're here. Right. If you have Le'Veon, right. I'm gonna ride that train until I'm not gonna ride anymore. And yes, maybe I do end up with two starting running backs next year. The question is, is if you don't and you just happen to either pick him up for some reason because somebody dropped him, or you drafted him last year because you liked him, as did all three of us. Uh, probably drafted him without having Le'Veon Bell on on teams Absolutely. all over the place. All over this, the place. Um, this is the reason why I want wanted James Conner in the beginning. I mean, obviously, we, we scouted him, and we did a bunch of rookie breakdown on him last offseason, and we all liked him probably more than most people did. We there were is on that no train. chance anybody else was as high early on Le'Veon Bell as us. I mean, on James Conner. Right. No chance. Right. And I've always... I'm, I'm, I've am I'm, been leery of Le'Veon Bell. I can't deny his talent. And I eventually came around on, you know, having him on my squad. But I've always had this itch in the back of my mind because he's got these off-the-field concerns. He's got the Pittsburgh Steelers not wanting to pay him concerns. And he's got these holding out, came back right before the season started last year. And obviously, we're, we're seeing what's playing out now. I gotta say he is on Spotify. You can check Le'Veon Bell out, and he's got a five five disc song CD thing. He's well, on tour you do that, now. You'll realize how quickly he needs to be back playing football. But see, that's the <laughs> thing. I don't think he thinks that. Well, I think he thinks yeah, that you'll, you'll, he's ready. He'll figure on. it out real quick once that thing goes. <laughs> <laughs> you think he could afford some better beats? Like the music's not even that good. It's just. It's, I don't know. But and he does look like he's gained a couple LBs. Let's let, take Le'Veon Bell out of this conversation. But this that's is, a whole other rabbit hole. But this is my point of why I'm. I, I, <laughs> I have James Conner, and now I'm reaping the benefits of having James Conner, and it, it it could just continue. I mean, obviously, I'm pretty confident that Le'Veon Bell is going to come back at some point in the season. He's not trying to lose a whole year of eligibility, so he's going to come back, and then James Conner is going to be right back on your bench as long as Le'Veon's healthy. I don't think Le'Veon is going to be a Steeler next year, and I could I think James Conner is the future running back of the Steelers. Like this is. He's, this is going to happen again for you next year is what I feel like. Mm-hmm. He's shown you so much in these first two games. I mean, he had 31 carries for 138 yards in week one while they tried to beat the Browns and couldn't quite pull it off. That was through, you know, that that gives you an extra quarter, 10 more minutes of, of game there in the uh, in, in the overtime matchup. Plus, it's raining, you know, so True. a little had, more sloppy, so a little more handoffs. But, yes, had can't, six can't targets, deny. caught five of them for 57. So you're seeing this 10-point PPR floor both of these first two weeks. Right. On top of the carries that he's getting, he's still got and eight carries down. last week after being down 21 to nothing. And, and you're down uh, DeCastro in the game. Right. Which is a nice piece on the offensive line for the Steelers. And they gave him that goal line carry, and he just – he. He was not going to be denied. It was a second effort. It looked like he was stuffed. He spun out of it, dove into there in the end zone. So I'm reaping the benefits of why I took James Conner and why I have him. I, like, why would I ruin a good thing? Why would I go fishing for well, you, something? You would go fishing because nothing's guaranteed in this league. And there's uh, there was already talks when Le'Veon Bell was kind of holding out whether the Steelers, that the Steelers were going to take a running back kind of high-ish in this draft to replace him so they didn't have to worry about it. Right, your Darius Geis. Being your a Darius guy, Geis and who knows if that was true or not. You could be trying to I get I mean, there was a lot of back. chatter about it, and I would assume that, that they're not, you know, I don't think there's that much chatter about it if it wasn't true. Um, somewhere in some form, 
shape or another. So, number one, you were already kind of okay with replacing Connor. Connor's been great. I like Connor. Nobody's going to beat the drum. I love this guy. I, there's 30, 40, probably an hour of content of why I love James Connor. Sure. But, like, it's this is a league where this position is quote unquote replaceable and maybe James Conner isn't offering quite the upside that the guy that they know that they had and the guy like Le'Veon Bell just in this game alone like if Le'Veon was playing he's got way more than five catches yeah there's like, no doubt he doesn't have 12 so maybe, targets maybe you're game, looking yes. to get an elite maybe and maybe you don't quite get a guy who's that much better than James Conner he just does something different in your split in time next year this situ all I'm saying is the situation after this season if you don't own Le'Veon Bell all of a sudden, James Conner could be a whole lot less um, valuable. Valuable, quickly. It I, I, on the way, th- and, and right now it seems like you could potentially package up a James Conner and something decent to go after somebody that I know I felt comfortable with for the next five years in my lineup. Let's just say that you went after your, like a Christian McCaffrey with a Connor. He's a nice piece to possibly, if this guy likes yes. Connor and is feeling what's going on there, it's a nice piece to as a trading. You know, you're still going to have to give up something good to get Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, I'm not saying that yeah. James Conner's just going to get you. But he's a nice bridge but to start. Right. He's a good could, bridge. He's a package builder right now. Exactly. To get something that you maybe feel a little safer with down the line yeah. rather than gambling and saying, well, I love James Conner so much. He's going to be the guy. I loved plenty of guys who I think should be the guys, but the team doesn't see it that way. And they do something else, you know, rendering my guy invalu or not invaluable, unvaluable, I guess. Well, uh, so I like that idea. I, I love the idea of James Conner plus what gets me Christian McCaffrey, gets me Ezekiel Elliott. That's a little high. Yeah, you know, I mean, Zeke's James, a little high. I was trying to pick yeah, somebody yeah, that was a little it. more middle. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't want to, but Christian McCaffrey's obviously with the PPR and what Cam's doing with him. Yes, I wouldn't want to do too much side to side. I, 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 Christian McCaffrey's a step forward. And you got to be go if you're going to package. Yeah, I like the I like that phrase, package builder. He's a good base to get that package going. Christian, Le'Ve, um, James Conner plus what gets you what? How much better? Right. You know, and I love that. I love that frame. I love that idea. And Christian I, McCaffrey just being a guy that there's the public is kind of all over the place on. Some people are real down on him. Some people love him. You know, so it's just he's somebody that like Zeke. You're probably not going to go get. Zeke necessarily. But, but, well, I but, mean, there's but and Zeke, you could. But the the Dallas offense right now is in flux, sure, and, fair and especially after Week One. Obviously, Week Two they got him a little going, but they Week One was pretty. You know, he got he's got 14, two touchdowns basically points. that have yes. kept you in Zeke like territory exactly over but the first two weeks not, that were kind of but not nah. that twenty eight points that you right. were looking for, not one hundred and fifty rushing yards and two touchdowns and a couple catches. But to play, I I I'm gonna agree with what Jay Wayne was saying. I think that Le'Veon Bell's given. James Conner enough of a platform here with his holdout and not showing up to work. James Conner's given us enough to show. Obviously, you got D'Angelo Williams and all that stuff that came in. Whenever Le'Veon Bell's not here, there is production to be had just because of the offense. And they do. They have, again this year, plugged in a running back who they don't pull out to, off the field on third downs to get those catches. And it's not Le'Veon Bell, and it's not the same quantity, and it's definitely not the same quality, but it's enough to give you 20 points a week. And which is and awesome. You haven't won a game so, yet. Yeah, and they haven't won a game yet. But anytime you can get a running back to plug in your lineup, that's going to get you twenty points a week. That's ridiculously great. But I will say this: that the defense is atrocious. Sure. And you know, yes, they may be looking better by the end of the season. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if they they're still reeling from Shazy. Or I hate to even bring his name up yeah. because every how bad it is. But they're well, still reeling. They're they've still been trying reeling. to address the defense for years, and they keep taking stabs on defensive. Players. Oh yeah, what well, they did that? They they took uh, four linebackers in a row in the first round. It's, it's not really just, just Ryan Shazy. One pick I'm that just it takes to draft a running back in the mid second or third. You know. Yeah. Oh, it could be an undrafted rookie. Look at Corey Clement comes in and just kind of makes his way into the lineup. It happens. But I I think that he's given enough to say, all right, well maybe we can focus elsewhere, and then make. But yes. Uh, you know, I said it off air that the Buccaneers were not drafting a tight end two years ago when they got OJ Howard. But he, all of us, there, we're not going tight end. We're not. We're not going tight end. We don't need a tight end. Oh my God, OJ Howard's on the board at pick eighteen or whatever it was, and they took him. They didn't think he'd be there. Maybe a top ten pick type thing. I will. But the thing about it is, is a couple years ago Nelson Aguilar's rookie season, the Eagles were Chip Kelly. It couldn't have been better. They had Jordan Matthews. Nelson Aguilar was coming in to take Jeremy Macklin's place. And Casey said before the season, this whole thing could go terrible and they could fire the coach. And I was like, what are you, an idiot? Do you not see what's going on in the Eagles? 
and the whole thing caught on fire, burnt to the ground, and they fired the coach. You know, so like for Casey to say that there's a you know it's a fifty fifty chance if James Connor's doing this at this type of rate next year. I'll I'll say I got no problem with the player. It's just a matter of the situation. Well, the situation is one of the best in the league for right. fantasy points for a running back. For sure. There's no denying that. And James Conner has done everything he's been asked to do on the field, except be Le'Veon Bell, but he's still putting up ridiculously good fantasy points. Right. So I guess we come right back around to some type of Patrick Mahomes esque question. Can you get enough to see him leave your roster? Because it's it's not you know, you just you got to go quant quality over quantity. Right. I'm, I'm a big I've, I preach that all the time anyway. So you got to go up from James Conner. You can't say, oh well, I sold James Conner for uh, you know a couple of second round picks or this yeah, or I that. Did, I traded him for Crowell and uh, and, uh, and two, two seconds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to go. No, up. that's not what I'm saying by well, any means. I know, and I'm just, well, we're just trying to help the listener yeah. out here, and because we can't, you know, can't just think it for them. Got to tell them, you know, how how we're thinking here. And again, if you go in and sign up to be on Patreon, you can literally send us your trade offers and we'll try to help you through and we'll see your roster and all that good stuff but might even youtube live and uh the answer for you yeah exactly so yes i mean the who we don't you'd have to have a crystal ball to see what happens sure. with james Conner and Le'Veon bell for even just for the rest of regular season yeah i've only heard one just about but i've only heard i need to say this sorry i've heard one person say that there's <laughs> the two you there's two weeks that the steelers could be, have Le'Veon Bell inactive, so it, right. uh, almost the entire season is. I, I mean, almost everybody's saying that he's gonna he, he has to come back for Week Ten right. to get those six. Yeah, games I told in. you this before the season started that they can put him on on uh, the exempt list of some sort and for two weeks. for two weeks, and then his season doesn't count. So if he wants to play and he's have a season, he's got to come like count, back Week Six. It's it, it, it's got uh, technically I think for if and I don't know if the Steelers would do that to him, but I've, look what he's doing to the Steelers. So maybe they're like, okay, well you know, f you back, buddy. So I think it's Week Eight at a minimum. Maybe earlier, sure. but I don't. It's not week ten because they have those two weeks to hold over him. So it's week eight or earlier, but maybe not even earlier at this point. So, uh, you know, it's. I think he comes back week six. Just I got no I'm throwing just, a I'm dart. Throwing, throwing, throwing a there. dart. Um, I will say to the point of saying that you know, well, maybe they're not going to draft a running back for any reason, and they're just going to go defense because their defense is real. And like I can see that they could. They're probably going to spend some picks on defense. They might sign a free agent or two. Usually not their style, um, but. Just on the team that they just played. We just talked about it. Punted on defense, essentially. And they're just, you got Big Ben, you got AB locked up. I mean, why not try to get another player that's a huge difference maker for your offense? And you have Juju Smith Schuster. Like, you have an elite offense that, you know, you want to go score 37 points a game. You just didn't win because the other team scored 42. So you could be just kind of saying, well, we just need a mediocre defense and we're going to ride Big Ben, AB, young Juju, and a, and a new elite running back that maybe we go up a little higher to spend some money on because we, we we're, we're focusing on offense right well now. They've, they've been they, it hasn't worked they have you know they've afc championship games rarely in the last i mean you know it's like they get they get to the playoffs yeah. and they just lose sure and so yeah and you see those defensive teams kick in in the playoffs and it just especially in the afc now yeah. you got the jaguars coming through there it somehow some way the pittsburgh jaguars game last year turned into a shootout you know because that's just what happens with the Steelers. But at the end of the day, the Jaguars won the game, and I I think I uh, yes they have been they've been all offense for years. And but like that's what you hear is Big Ben, AB, well, just because Le'Veon, we're sitting here and talking about the, the hardware defense, that you need a defense doesn't mean that the Steelers are all of a sudden going to be like oh we need to just invest everything in defense. Just like the Saints, all of a sudden it took them a while to be like hey Drew Brees is a little older, let's try to get a defense and a run game here. You know it's just. Yeah, you know, they, it's not that they don't try to get players on defense. It doesn't. Speaking of the Saints, crazy how uh, they're zero two and not and last in the league in rushing while Mark Ingram sits on the suspension. Like he's not important. So Saints are one and one. They beat. The oh, Browns. they did beat the, somehow the Browns somehow. Yeah. Anyhow, so there was our James Conner uh, breakdown for you. 